Hello, everyone. My name is Mike McWhorter, and I'm an engineer with Yellow Brick Data. In this session, I'll be giving you a tour of our new user interface. We've simplified the process of loading data, writing and editing SQL, and managing all of your Yellow Brick databases. The new UI also gives you a consistent management experience across all of your data warehouse deployments, which makes it great for distributed cloud environments. If you'd like to try it for yourself, the best way to get started is with one of our new test drive instances. And let's dive right into the session. This session is called Getting Started with Yellow Brick. Our goal is to get your analytics environment up and running as quickly as possible. And the best way to get started with Yellow Brick is with one of our new test drive instances. To request a test drive instance, all you have to do is go to yellowbrick.com and click on the test drive button. We'll provide you with your own dedicated instance of Yellow Brick free of charge for seven days. You can load up to 60 terabytes of data to run performance tests and test out all of your applications so you can get a feel for how the system works. One of the first things you'll notice about Yellow Brick is that it's fast, really fast. We have a unique software architecture that can plow through billions of records in milliseconds, and we can do it at a fraction of the price that other data warehouses charge. But it's not enough just to tell you that it's fast. We'd like to show you by letting you test drive a Yellow Brick instance so you can see it in action. The test drive instance that I'll be showing you today is built on top of Kubernetes. This one is running in AWS on Amazon EKS. We're going to be making this available to all of our test drive users in the next couple of weeks, and we're really excited about it because it includes a preview of our new redesigned user interface called Yellow Brick Manager. I'll go ahead and log in so you can see what it looks like. We designed the new user interface to be clean and simple so that it's intuitive to use. The menu bar on the left will allow you to navigate to the different tabs. Right now we're on the Home tab. This is where you'll find all of our documentation, instructional videos, and the latest updates about new features. It also has contact information for customer support. So if you'd like to speak to an engineer or have any questions at all about the product, you can find our contact information here. Next, we have the Instances tab. This is where you monitor the status of your various Yellowbrick instances. One of the great things about Yellowbrick is that you can deploy it anywhere. You can run it in the cloud or in a private data center, and the user experience will be the same no matter where it is. Yellowbrick Manager provides a single federated view of all of your Yellowbrick instances, regardless of where they're physically running or what type of instance you're using. Right now, we can see our test drive instance, but if you had multiple Yellowbrick instances, you would be able to view and manage all of them from this tab. You can also monitor the health of each database and view your resource utilization here. In the Databases tab, you can see the different databases, tables, and database objects in each instance. In the Query tab, you can submit queries manually, as well as execute DDL or DCL commands on your Yellowbrick instance. And finally, the Load tab will allow you to perform bulk uploads into your database. So if you'd like to load your own data set to see how it performs on Yellowbrick, this is where you would do it. Let's take a closer look at these tabs so you can see how they work. I'll start with the Databases tab. From here, you can see the different databases and tables for each instance. Just choose your instance from the pull-down menu and select the database you'd like to see, and it will give you a list of tables. We're going to select the TPCDS database. When you select the table, you can see the specific details like table statistics, the table definition, and the activity logs. At the top of the page, the tabs will allow you to browse through all the different database objects that you have defined, such as views, schemas, sequences, or stored procedures. The tabs for storage, locations, and formats are used to load data from external sources. We'll come back to those in a minute. One thing you'll notice that is conspicuously missing from this list of database objects are indexes. There are no indexes defined for any of these tables. This is a great feature of Yellow Brick. You never have to build indexes. That's because every column is indexed internally. You'll get fast lookups on every column, and you never have to waste time building indexes manually. Once you load your data, you can begin searching it right away. The Query Editor is one of the new features in Yellow Brick Manager. This is a browser-based SQL development environment, and it has support for things like statement auto-completion, result set viewing, and it even includes some visualization tools. This isn't meant to replace any of your BI tools, but it should serve your purposes more than well enough for running simple queries or exploring your data set. To use the Query tab, the first thing you need to do is open a connection by going to the pull-down menu and selecting the Yellow Brick instance you'd like to connect to. Once you connect, it populates the schema browser and shows you a list of available databases and schemas. The next step is to connect to a database. 
I'm going to connect to the TPCDS database by selecting it from the pull-down menu. The TPCDS dataset is included with the free seven-day test drive of Yellowbrick. It contains one terabyte of randomly generated sales records, and it's designed to simulate a decision support system for an online retailer. If you're not familiar with TPCDS, it's a standard benchmark that's used to measure the performance of a data warehouse. It has tables full of customers, products, and purchase records, and comes with a set of standardized queries that you can run to measure performance. We encourage you to run some of the benchmark queries yourself to see how our performance compares to your existing data warehouse. We think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Now let's run a query. Yellowbrick uses the same query syntax as Postgres, so if you're already familiar with Postgres, you don't have to learn anything new. All of the standard SQL, DDL, and BCL commands look exactly the same. If you have any questions about the command syntax or which data types are supported, you can find links to the documentation on the Home tab. To submit a query, you can type it in the Query Editor and click the Run button, or you can load an external SQL file into the Query Editor by going to the File menu and clicking Open. I have a set of TPCDS benchmark queries on my local machine, so I'll just go ahead and load one of those. And I'll click the Run button to execute the query. When the query completes, we can see the output in the results window. You can click on the column headers to sort the results by column. And notice how the result set has different tabs. This will allow you to view the resource utilization for each query and to examine the query execution plan. Here, you'll see a graphical representation of the different steps. The operations that require the greatest amount of system resources will be highlighted with a purple glow. And finally, in the Explore tab, we have a graphing utility, which will allow you to create some quick visualizations with your result set. TPCDS is a great benchmark, but when you're test driving a new data warehouse, the only way to know how well your application will perform is to load your own data set. That way you can verify that your applications work, you can measure the performance, and you can compare the performance to your existing data warehouse. With other data warehouses, you would typically load data by doing bulk inserts. You can do that with Yellowbrick too, but we have a much faster option. Yellowbrick has a bulk load feature that will allow you to load data directly from Amazon S3 or any S3 compatible object store. The bulk loader is optimized for performance. It can load data at a rate of several million rows per second, and it's the tool that we recommend for loading large data sets. Let me walk you through a load so you can see how it works. This is my test data set. I've created a bucket in Amazon S3, and I've uploaded a data file to my bucket. It's a compressed CSV file, which contains about 50 million rows of NetFlow data in comma-separated format. In order to load these records, the first thing we need to do is create a table so that we have some place to store them. We'll do this by opening the Query tab and creating a new table. First, I'll select the instance and the database. I'm going to use the Yellowbrick trial database. We're going to call our table NetFlow, and this is the DDL statement that we'll use to create it. If you're importing this data from another data warehouse, be sure to check Yellowbrick's documentation for the list of supported data types. In some cases, you may need to modify your existing DDL to match the corresponding data types in Yellowbrick. Let's go ahead and run this command. And when I hit the Refresh button, you can see the new table in the schema browser. Now that our table has been created, let's go to the Load tab to set up our S3 connection. First, we select an instance and a database. And then we'll click Manage External Resources to set up our S3 connection. The first thing we need to do is add a storage device. So I'm going to click on the Storage tab and click Add Storage. I'm going to give it a name. We'll call it My S3 Storage and select the public schema. The storage type is Amazon S3 or compatible. Remember that you don't have to use Amazon S3. S3 is a standard protocol for object storage, which means you can load data from any S3 compatible object store as long as it supports the S3 protocol. In the future, we'll be adding new options for different types of storage devices, but for right now, the only available option is S3. Next, we'll enter our endpoint. Since we're using Amazon S3, our endpoint is S3 amazonaws.com. I'm using the US East 1 region. And next, I'll enter the credentials for my object store. 
These are the access key and secret key that you would normally use to connect to your S3 bucket. And then we'll hit save. Now that we've defined a storage device, we'll go to the locations tab and define a storage location. Click add location, enter a name. I'm calling this my S3 bucket. It goes in the public schema. Select the storage device we just created. And lastly, we'll enter the path. This is the name of your S3 bucket. And we'll hit save. Next, we need to add a format. This is where you tell Yellowbrick how to parse the files that you're uploading. For example, are they comma separated? Are they tab delimited? Is it just a binary dump from Postgres? You can define all of that here. We're going to call this NetFlow format. We'll use the public schema. My input file is just a standard CSV file, which is the default configuration for the loader. So I'm going to leave all these fields alone and I'm going to unselect the has header checkbox because my input file does not have a header line. I'll save that and then return to my load screen. Now we can start loading data. I'll select the storage location I just created and click next. Then I'll select the format of the input files. And finally, I'll select a table to load them into. When I press the load button, it immediately begins loading data. While the load is in progress, it shows us the metrics of how fast the load is running. We can see that it's loading data at well over a million rows per second. And now that our load is complete, we can see that it loaded 50 million records in about 30 seconds. If I go to the databases tab, I can see that my table has been successfully loaded and now I can start analyzing it. To do that, I'll connect Yellowbrick to a third-party application. Connecting your applications to the Yellowbrick data warehouse is easy. To the outside world, Yellowbrick looks just like a Postgres database. So any tool that can connect to Postgres can also connect to Yellowbrick. This means that all of your reporting and visualization tools will work straight out of the box without any special drivers or plugins. The first thing that we need to do is create a user for our application. Your current user account has administrative privileges, so we don't want to connect with that account. It's a good general practice to create a user with limited permissions so that we don't have to worry about accidentally modifying or deleting any rows when we're analyzing our data. To create a user, we need to open the Query tab and issue some DCL commands. We're going to create a user called YB user, and we're going to give this user read-only access to the Yellowbrick trial database. To connect your application to Yellowbrick, you'll need five things. You'll need the host name of your instance, the port number, the username and password, and the name of the database you'd like to connect to. The host name and port number can be found on the Instances tab, and the database name can be found in the Databases tab. I'd like to analyze my data set with Tableau, so let's open Tableau and set up a connection. In Tableau, you do this by adding a new data source. I'm choosing the Yellowbrick connector. Remember that Yellowbrick is Postgres compatible, so the Yellowbrick connector in Tableau is really just an alias to the Postgres connector. Next, I'll enter all of my connection information. I'll select the SSL checkbox to encrypt the connection and click Sign In. Now I'm connected to my Yellowbrick instance. Now I can load my NetFlow table and connect to all of my existing dashboards. This concludes our session on getting started with Yellowbrick. If you'd like to reserve your own test drive instance, just go to yellowbrick.com and click on the test drive button. And remember, if you have any questions, our engineers are standing by to help.